Humans love to dig a deep hole. From mine excavators to sandbox players to JK Rowling, we always ask, can I go any lower? I'm no exception. I've heard the call so many times, there's a song about it. Sam is digging a hole. He's digging a hole. Look at Sam digging. Of course, what I'm doing there is baby stuff. A really deep hole takes gumption and also special equipment, over 50 kilometers of pipes, countless drill bits, a bunch of mud, 200 tons of string, and so much money. Or at least that's what it took to dig this, the Kola Super Deep Borehole, the deepest hole on Earth. It's here on the Kola Peninsula, and it's 12,262 meters deep, or about 7.6 miles, or about the distance between the Bronx Zoo Sea Lion Pool and the Central Park Zoo Sea Lion Pool or between the Central Park Sea Lion Pool and the Prospect Park Sea Lion Pool, or the Prospect Park Sea Lion Pool and the New York Aquarium Sea Lion Pool. In short, it's a deep hole, and New York City has very evenly spaced sea lions. According to locals, the hole is so deep you can hear souls crying out from hell, which is almost true. The sounds are my writers, who got stuck down there three weeks ago and are singing their way through Bjork's catalog. JK, untrue, they wouldn't even fit. The hole is just 23 centimeters in diameter at the bottom. You could barely fit a frisbee. So why drill a skinny little hole deeper than the Mariana Trench? The answer, like so many questions, is science. Wait, what's that? Zoom in on that. Ugh, oh, of course. The answer, like with so many questions, is the Cold War. See, in the latter half of the 20th century, as the superpowers flexed on each other by racing up to space, they also raced down to Earth's mantle, i.e. the as yet unbreached layer between the molten core and our home, the crust. The Soviets cooked us here. The US's plan was led by the American Miscellaneous Society, who decided to drill our hole here because the crust is thinner under the ocean floor. In 1961, they drilled a 183 meter test hole 3,600 meters underwater, miraculously coming in on time and under budget. But everything after that was an expensive, mismanaged disaster. The hole never got any deeper, and Congress pulled funding in 1966. On May 24, 1970, the Soviet Union started drilling the Kola Hola. By 1979, they'd beaten the existing deepest hole record, and 10 years later, they reached the current depth of 12,262 meters. Just after that, the Germans tried to dig a competing hole, but ran out of money a bit over 9.5 kilometers down. For reference, here's the reverse Empire State Building. Here are the US and Germany's flop holes. And here's the Kola Super Deep Borehole. It was dug by a modified version of a rig used to drill oil wells, which got the hole 7,263 meters down, or just over four and a half miles. After that, they upgraded to a rig that could lift 400 tons and hopefully drill down to 15 kilometers of depth. The drill bits that did the job were like rotating spiky disks, each of which could grind it out for about four hours before needing to be pulled out of the hole, disassembled, and replaced, which could take over eight hours. So if you did more than four hours of work today, congratulations! You worked harder than a drill bit, and shouldn't have to toil a minute more. By the way, in those four hours, one of those bits could drill down like 10 meters tops. No wonder it took so long. The bit sat at the end of the drill string, which weighed about 200 tons and wasn't so much a string as a series of pipes connecting the rig to the drilly part. Like the space race, the whole race demanded as yet uninvented technology to do the job, so they created a new type of drill for this hole, one where only the bit rotated and not the string or anything else, and which got lubricated with pressurized mud. Alright, stop the video. I have to admit something. I lied to you earlier. I said this was the Kola Super Deep Borehole, but IRL it looks more like this. Ever-changing levels of pressure, heat, and rock density as they went down bent it into a lot of crazy shapes. In the relatively homogeneous granite of the first seven kilometers, they could just drill straight-ish down. But below, the density started to vary more, so the drill, attached to the top by only a pipey string, followed the path of least resistance. I'm running low on MoGraph budget, so let's try to demonstrate what happened with the drill bit jankly tied to a literal string. When you lower the string into straight water, the bit follows gravity to the bottom. When you put a bunch of Play-Doh in the cup, the bit drifts to the side, staying in the low density water instead of burrowing into the denser Play-Doh. Same thing happens with different density rocks. But why not just let the hole twist and bend and find its own way down? Two reasons. One, to dig a hole this deep, you can't just dig it. You also have to reinforce it all the way down with metal pipes, 20 centimeters in diameter, just a bit narrower than the hole itself, a task best done fully vertical. Two, the low density and fracturing of rocks down there didn't just pull the drill bit around, the rocks also shifted and broke around the hole, curving and breaking pipes that were already down there. 
When pipe broke off, if the hole was too curved to lift it back out, they'd have to fill the hole up with concrete up to the 7 kilometer mark and start all over, undoing years of work each time. That's why it took 19 years to reach the hole's current depth, and part of why it never got any deeper, even though they were trying for years after. The big problem in the end was temperature. Their best estimates of the temperature near the hole's eventual depth was around 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, aka water boiling temp. When they got down there though, the actual temperature was more like 356 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius, aka cookie baking temp. Now, if I were on the team, I would just say, yippee, a naturally occurring cookie oven, throw a bunch of dough down there, and chalk it up as a win for Mother Russia. But for the scientists, the temperature was bad news. See, the combination of high heat and lower density at these depths made the rock less rocky and more plasticky. By one description, trying to drill and maintain a hole down there would be, quote, like trying to keep a pit in the center of a pot of hot soup. In the interest of journalistic rigor, we tried to drill a hole in hot soup. Didn't work. Ultimately, the hot soup problem, the constant breakage of both equipment and the hole itself, and the fact that post-USSR collapse, Russia had bigger financial priorities than hole, meant game over. The borehole's facility shut down in 1995, and they sealed it 10 years later. Now if you stop by, you'll see a small bolted down manhole cover that incorrectly records the hole's depth as 12,226 meters. I guess those last 36 meters are only for the real things. But while the Kola Superdeep borehole story has ended, humanity continues down. In fact, since 2003, a team funded by mostly the Japanese government and the US National Science Foundation, plus a sprinkling of cash from the European Consortium of Ocean Research Drilling and a bunch of other countries, is working to drill a hole that, while not as deep as Kola, does aim to hit mantle rocks since they're planning to drill in a part of the seafloor where the crust is only about 6 kilometers or 3.75 miles deep. In total, between the drilling boat and the onshore base and the 24-7 drilling operation, it's expected to cost a billion dollars. So yes, technically, many of the world's most powerful countries are working together to throw one billion dollars into a hole. And you know what? Let them. My oven's broken and I want cookies. Every time I make a new HAI video, I feel like I find out about a new crazy job. Hole builder, mountain namer, worm dropper. With so many options, how are you supposed to know what to do with your life? How could you possibly make an informed decision? Well, one place to start is with this video sponsor, 80,000 Hours. They're a nonprofit, meaning all they have to offer is completely free to you. Here's the deal. On average, you will spend 80,000 hours of your one wild and precious life working, so why not spend it making the world a better place? 80,000 hours with their job boards, one-on-one -on -one advising, and informative podcasts about the world's most pressing problems and the people working full-time to solve them want to help you have a fulfilling career that also, capital D, capital G, does good. So to get started on planning a career that works on one of the world's most pressing problems, join their newsletter at 80,000hours.org slash half as interesting and get a copy of their free career guide.